The southern Bahamas still recovers in the wake of Hurricane Joaquin. Many without power, without water, but not without hope. I've lost everything, but I'm saying I'm happy to be alive. Homes ripped apart, torn apart, roofs shred to pieces. Unbelievable, it's just like a war zone. Aid comes in from everywhere as the waters recede. Our house got damaged. The people across from us got damaged, the whole island. It's just catastrophic, it's just horrible. You couldn't even find them the, 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 the thought of this would happen to us. Through it all, the Bahamian spirit, Bahamian pride still remains. The Bahamas, like this flag, beaten but not destroyed. ZNS News continuing coverage of the recovery starts now. Now in HD. ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news brought to you by BTC Everyday. Prime Minister the Right Honourable Perry Christie today launched the way forward to rebuild after the passage of Hurricane Joaquin. Good evening everyone, I'm Chris Saunders. Thank you so much for joining us. Building and the way forward right now seems to be a very pretty expensive undertaking. Government, though, says it is committed to ensure that resources are in place through a number of avenues. Clint Watson tonight on the way forward. We are determined beginning immediately to begin restoration. Prime Minister the Right Honourable Perry Christie, ahead of the actual figures, suspect that the road to recovery could cost tens of millions of dollars. It's almost frighteningly large in terms of the, the, the enormity of it. And so, um, because to see the way infrastructure has been breached in different parts of Crooked Island, in different parts of Auckland, in different parts of um, Long Island, and those islands in particular have been devastated in some parts of it, and, and that means a lot of money. Then there's a personal loss of these storm survivors. Mr. Christie told Parliament the government will move to assist those affected by signing an exigency order. That will allow people, Mr. Speaker, in these areas um, to, to uh, uh, I will sign these exigency orders to allow Bahamians to import duty-free essential items <coughs> coupled with the waiver of related landing fees, certain departure taxes and customs processing fees. These fiscal measures will aid in making, Mr. Speaker, relief excellent. Mr. Christie says they will also be establishing and announcing a special NEMA fund. Um, that will be intended. We're going to sort of um, have a public-private sector grouping. I'm going to invite leading members of the private sector to be a part of that because the, the cost to the country is really enormous. And there are people who will not, not be able to find the means to recover from this and we're going to have to find a way to help them and, and, and we're going to have to find a way to help them sooner rather than later. Prime Minister Christie says it's time to put in place legislation that safeguard Bahamians from having to endure these kind of experiences time after time. To anticipate that we have to give the right advice in terms of where people should build. There are going to be vulnerable areas now that we have to look at the Disaster Preparedness Response Act which which advises us to declare areas that are vulnerable, meaning that there should be no build areas because people will lose a lot of money and possibly their lives. Having conducted assessments and tours, the Prime Minister says it's imperative that the information gathered translates into quick action. In fact, he's of the view that for many, this is the beginning of a new day. Out of disaster comes opportunities. Clint Watson, ZNS Network News. A comprehensive report on the hurricane was presented in Parliament today. The Prime Minister said while the damage was catastrophic, the spirit and survival, along with the indomitable faith of the Bahamian spirit, resounded from island to island. It's a clear indication those communities will rebuild stronger than before. Here's Janaya Noel Ferguson. 
Hurricane Joaquin left a trail of destruction in the southern and central islands, unimaginable by residents who've weathered many storms. Prime Minister Perry Christie noting that while the road to recovery will be long and hard, the government remains committed to ensuring that those settlements impacted return to normalcy. In the House of Assembly Wednesday, he gave a breakdown of some of the damage sustained from preliminary reports. On Crooked Island, this is the report. Local residences, 65% received major damage. 25% received moderate damage. 6% minor damage. 4% destroyed. Every school is 100% major damage. Crooked Island. Government buildings, 50% received moderate damage. 50% received minor damage. Churches, 55% received major damages. 45% received min minor damages. Resorts, 85% received major damage. In Akron's, electricity and telecommunications are off, and extensive flooding and home damage reported. Long Island, San Salvador, Meguana, Inagua, Rumkey, Long Key, and Ragged Island also receiving significant damage. Some areas, though, are still not accessible due to flooding. But according to the Prime Minister, some homes that suffered major damage will have to be condemned. And BEC, BTC, Water and Sewage have all been mobilized on the various islands to restore utilities. But as for immediate relief, the Prime Minister said it's important that all affected will be in receipt of those needed items. There's been an incredible response from the Bahamian public in pro making provisions available um, for people in the affected areas. And so we have to be concerned now, Mr. Speaker, of the volume of supplies going in to make sure that they reach. Um, when we were touring with the Deputy Prime Minister and his constituency, there were people in certain parts of us saying, well, the supplies hadn't reached them, even though... It's now, the Prime Minister stressed that the government will also have to establish measures to ensure that there is a quicker response time during natural disasters. To make a determination of whether or not it should have mandatory powers for evacuation, because there are people who refuse to move, right? The law now provides that if the director of NEMA regards it to be important, he can um, draft an order and recommend to the prime minister to sign an order um, declaring a state of emergency, which will then, the police will be able to force people to move. But I think, Mr. Speaker, the government will come to parliament because we need much quicker response than that. Undoubtedly, he said, this storm will remain in the minds and hearts of Bahamians for years to come. But the Bahamian people have a sheer will to move on. We were troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We were perplexed, but not in despair. We were cast down, but not destroyed. Mr. Speaker, we will recover. We will restore, and we will continue to rise. I said the ravaged islands will continue. Meantime, the House of Assembly resumes on October 21st. Janae Noel Ferguson, ZNS Network News. Opposition leader Dr. Hubert Minnis also toured the island says he gladly accepted the invitation by the prime minister. He says he was criticized for this step, but it is not time, he says, to play politics. Minnis says Joaquin means God will judge. And he added that this may be a sign for all Bahamians to come together and unite as he believes we have become too divided as a people. All residents throughout the Bahamas and in particular the family islands should be encouraged to ensure that all satellite phones and communications are in place. This national check time, Mr. Speaker, I term it, this national check time should also be promoted in the schools so that children are informed and taught how to prepare. And in the homes, adults must also be a part of this process. Hurricane preparedness, Mr. Speaker, must become habitual to every resident in this country. House member for Long Island, Loretta Butler-Turner, was not able to attend House proceedings today as she continues 
to coordinate relief efforts for Long Island. However, Central Grand Bahama MP Nico Grant spoke on her behalf. Uh, she is in Long Island doing what she has been doing for the past several days. She has also asked me to inform this House that as of yesterday, in partnership with Trans Island Airways, Odyssey Aviation, the Long Island Association, Archdeacon Keith Cartwright, they have delivered over 100,000 pounds of food, water, and medicine to all of the affected islands. She did not limit the effort to Long Island. 